Good morning, welcome back to the kitchen. I'm so excited today um, to show you a new recipe for your canning. Um, there really isn't a whole lot out of the garden in this except for some onions and celery and carrots and I'm going to be totally honest with you, I had to buy those. So, um, but this is a canned pot roast recipe that I found on the internet and I want to try this because it sounds so delicious. So come on into the kitchen and let's do this together. All right, so this pot roast is going to have a lot of gravy and it's going to have a wine wine sauce gravy. Um, it called for a pinot noir and I'm not a wine connoisseur, um, so I don't know much about it, but I did go and buy a bottle of that. Now, after I got the meat all cut up, um, I realized that I had probably twice as much. It called for about seven pounds of meat and I'm sure that I have 14 here, but... Uh, so I ended up, I had a bottle of Merlot on hand for some beef bourguignon that I had made. So we're going to just mix these two because um, it doesn't matter. So we're going to put these two into our pan. And we're going to cook them down. So I'm actually doubling uh, the recipe that I saw. All right, we're gonna turn that on and we're gonna reduce that by about half. Now, to help season this up, we're gonna add some vegetables. And these are ones, they don't have to be pretty and you don't have to be real particular about how you cut them because we're gonna strain these out. This is just to draw the flavors out of the vegetables into the wine sauce. And we're gonna boil this down and reduce it. So, we're gonna add these in. I think this is called a mirepoix, um, must be a French word, but it's where you take vegetables and season your broth with them and then remove them because we don't want these chunks in here because this is going to be meat and gravy with a few onions, but I'm so excited. I think when you see the seasonings that go into this, you will want to make this and put this on your pantry shelf. So we're going to go ahead and let this cook down. And I'll show you what we're going to do. While this is cooking down, we have some prep for our meat. All right. While the wine sauce is reducing, we're going to work on the meat. Um, I have it here in my drainer. Now, what I am using is venison. And I've used some sirloin roast and different pieces. But you can do this with beef. You can do it with pork. Um, you can, this is a really good recipe for cuts that might otherwise be tough because it's not going to be tough when we get through with it. Um, and I'm trying to make everything, and I may cut some of these as I go, pretty much uniform in size. Uh, they're going to be kind of large chunks of meat. We're going to put them in our jars because, like I said, we want uh, roast and we want gravy with a few onions. So um, I'm going to lay these out on a tray. Um, and I don't want them to touch because I don't want them to steam. We're going to bake these um, 500 degrees. My oven just beeped and said it was at temp. So we're going to lay these out and give a little bit of space between them. I may have to do it in more than one batch or, you know, uh, but we want these to be on 500 degrees. We want it to sear in the juices. Um, so we're going to put these in here and give some space between them. I've got two pans out. But I think that I've got more meat than is gonna fit on the two pans. That's why I went ahead and decided to kind of double my recipe. I say double, double what I think, because I'm kind of guessing at some of the amounts, some of the amounts were in the recipe, and some were not. So, but we're going to put these on here. Mm. Some are a little bigger than others, so some of them are going to get when we're done. Looks like we're going to have to do another batch after this. So, uh, let me show you what we're going to do to these. All right, we're going to take some oil and we're going to drizzle these and put in here and uh, 
We're going to watch these closely because we are cooking them at 500 degrees and it won't take long. Um, so we're going to make sure each one of these pieces are coated in the oil and we're going to sprinkle salt and pepper on them. So let's do this. Be sure we get some salt on each one. And this will make some really awesome meat drippings that we will use in our gravy with our wine and our beef stock. We're going to use beef stock in this. You could actually make your own if you want. Um, I am actually bought it for this recipe, but let's uh, be sure these are coated in the oil really well. No, I haven't done the pepper yet. Just kind of turn them over and make sure because we, we want them coated in the oil so they'll brown really nicely. And then I'll put the pepper on, I guess, since I about forgot it. We don't want too much oil. We don't want an oven fire. So remember, we're using 500. That's a really high temp, like, um, we just won't want to walk away. We'll want to stay here with it. Okay, now, we can't forget the pepper. You can probably hear my husband out there working on something, making a lot of noise. I can't wait to try this. Um, probably going to do a small jar of it just so I can open it and try it. This recipe has been on my mind for a while because I do love an old-fashioned pot roast. I mean, who doesn't, right? tender, flaky, the meat falls apart. You can put it over noodles, mashed potatoes, whatever you want. Okay, we're gonna put these in the oven and let them cook. Okay, so while that meat's in the oven, I'm gonna cut up onions. Onions are the only other thing I want to be in that jar besides tons of flavor and uh, meat gravy, but I do want a few onions. So we're gonna cut these in chunks, slice chunks. And we're going to roast those in the oven as well. So put them in here. Uh, for this, I'm doing seven onions. We're just going to put a few onions in each jar as we put them together. And that will make a beautiful dish. Imagine that in the cold winter time over a bowl of mashed potatoes. Yum. How easy is that when you come out from work or you've been out working in the cold all day or whatever and you just want something simple for dinner. I just can't wait to try it. And this probably is going to be one that um, I just open and try right away. Most of my stuff I put on the shelf and save for winter, but once in a while can't help yourself and you open something up to try it because I have a freezer full of venison and I try to find different ways to cook it um, that are delicious and if this works out like I think it's going to I want to uh, do more of it you know I grew up with my my dad deer hunting and my parents I don't know I hated deer meat honestly I thought it was Disgusting, tough, chewy, and I did not like that gamey taste. Well, give credit where credit's due. Both of my sons deer hunted, but they're both amazing chefs, and they can cook up food like nobody's business. And my oldest son, one time I was at his house, and he uh, he had made a, a roast. He had invited us over for dinner, and he had made a roast. And we ate it, and I thought it was the most delicious thing. And later he told me it was venison, and I'm like, no way. I didn't believe it, because it did not have that gamey flavor. Now, both of my boys now cook deer meat, and you would not know that it wasn't a delicious beef. 
So these onions, we're going to drizzle some oil over them. And we're just going to throw them in the oven as soon as I have a spot in the oven. And we're going to roast those as well. So I'm just waiting on the meat in the oven. And it is cooking. Uh, but it's going to take it a little more time. I set my timer for 10 minutes, but it's definitely going to be more than 10 minutes because it's just browning barely. And, uh, and you know, as your oven stays up to temp, things cook faster. So I just put those in there. So we'll come back as soon as something's ready to come out and we'll get this all put together. All right, so I have the second batch of meat in cooking. And while that's cooking, I want to show you, um, I'm going to pull the camera up here and show you that our wine sauce has reduced to half with the veggies in it, and now we're going to add some things to it. All right, you can see that our wine sauce with the veggies has reduced to about half. So now we're going to add some things to that, and we're going to just bring it to a simmer. We don't want to boil it like we were before. Um, one of the things that we're going to add is some beef stock. I bought this. You can, If you make your own, you can use that. This already smells so good. All right, I'm gonna add at least two of those, possibly more. I've got quite a bit of meat going here, so I want to have enough gravy for all of those jars. And if you ever do something like this and you have some left over, put it in your refrigerator and then cook something in your oven in it as a extra leftover, um, you know, and use it that way. Oh my gosh, that will be so good. So it's not, it's nothing that's wasted if you don't end up using it all. All right, so I've used three of these of the beef broth. I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat on under it and get it warm. Um, okay, to that I want to add two cans. Remember, I'm doing quite a bit. I want to add two cans of tomato paste. I've got organic tomato paste that I bought from Costco and I'm going to add two cans of that. It's going to give it a gorgeous burgundy flavor, or color. It'll give it a burgundy flavor. The wine actually is what's going to give it a nice burgundy flavor. And i got a little bit more in there. Okay. Here's one can. Let's put the second one in. Now I just want to cook these down to meld the flavors. And I'm still working on the meat and the onions, so... I've got plenty of time to let this cook down. There's going to be quite a bit of broth here, but I think I've got quite a bit of meat, so like I said, it'll never go to waste. All right, there's that. When we get everything in here, we'll kind of stir it and all those vegetables. They've really cooked down. Um, I can smell the flavor. Okay, I have about three big bay leaves here we're going to put in. And all this will be strained out before we use it. I have some sprigs of rosemary and some fresh thyme that I pulled from the garden. So we're going to put all that in. I put quite a bit of that in. Uh, kind of mush it all down in there. We're going to let this cook up. We have half a cup of balsamic vinegar. Mm, that smells nice. And you can use any balsamic vinegar, but I happen to get this one which I love. It's the Heavenly Oils and it is the uh, Balsamic Vinegar Black Mission Fig. But use whatever you have. 
I want about three tablespoons of garlic and I've got minced garlic, already minced garlic here because in my world the more garlic the better. Well, that's good for you too. And I have one cup of Worcester sauce. Last but not least, salt and pepper. I want two teaspoons of pepper. And I want four teaspoons of salt. until all those flavors come together and uh, that'll give it a little bit of time while the meat and the onions are still cooking. I've got the second batch of meat in so uh, the first batch of meat came out. Let me show it to you. It looks amazing. The first cook we the first cooking is going to be the dry cooking where we cook it on the 500 and then when we can it, it's going to be a moist cook and that's going to turn out wonderful. So all right. Alright, the last pan of meat is out and we're going to take the meat off the tray. Um, I already did this with the other one. We're going to take the pieces of meat off. See all these uh, drippings down here in the bottom and all this that's caramelized on the bottom? That is nothing but flavor. Look how beautiful these look. I love this. It smells really good. And earlier in my life I would have never said, oh, venison smells really good, but it does this does. So we're going to get these off and we're going to add these drippings into our pan of broth that we have going over here with the wine sauce and the beef broth and all of the beautiful wonderful fragrant seasonings that are in it. The kitchen's smelling really good and I didn't have anything to eat yet today so this is kind of hard. Oops. Now that we've got those off, <clears throat> um, we're going to scrape this and you can add a little bit of water to it, but just scrape these drippings off as best you can and uh, actually let me grab a cup. Pour a little bit of water on here so we can, it'll help us to get those pieces off the bottom. And then just work it around and get as much as you can off because that is so much flavor on there, you don't want to throw that out. All that caramelization, yum. And we're going to dump that right in our pot. Now we're going to take this beautiful broth that we made, we've added our drippings to it, and we're going to strain it to get out our herbs and spices. <laughs> I call them weeds, but they're not. But we want to get all that out and have our nice clear broth. We should have quite a bit. And we're straining out the celery and carrots and onions, but those did so much to flavor that. I could just smell it while it was over here cooking. I wish we had smell-o-vision because you would make this. It would be amazing. We want to squish out all the juice, all the flavor that we can get out of these.
All right, now we're to my favorite part, and that's assembling our jars. So I have my jars here. They do not, they're clean, washed, but I didn't have to sterilize them because we're gonna do a pressure canning. And that's gonna um, get our temperatures high enough, it's gonna kill everything in there. Now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna put some of my juice that we made in each jar. This, this recipe, I want to have lots of gravy in it. I want to be able to reduce it or thicken it or whatever I want. So I'm going to put a couple of scoops of this in each jar before I get started. And the reason I'm putting it in before I get started is because it helps prevent air bubbles from getting trapped on the bottom of the jar. So after, you know, if you put this in and then you're adding your ingredients, um, they're going down into the liquid and not trapping air under there. I'm going to put a couple of scoops in each jar. I'm guessing at eight jars. I don't know. I'm hoping. Uh, my canner holds seven, so I'm going to have to do two uh, processes of them. And if I was to do that, whatever I end up, I'll divide them in half, and I won't process seven and then do one. I'll do um, four and four. I like to even it out that way. Everything is weighted evenly in the canner. So, this smells heavenly. Okay. Next thing I want to do is get some, a few onions in the bottom of each jar. So I'm going to drop some onions in there. I don't know, we may put some on top too because I really don't know how many jars I'm going to get out of this. I'll know after I put the meat in. more onions than I thought I did though. First I was like, oh I should have cooked more onions, but we're okay. Um, all right, well I get some onions in there. Now let's go for putting meat in the jars. six good sized pieces in there. Let's see how far we can go here. One of those was pretty small.
Okay, we got four nice, or four, eight nice sized jars with the meat. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and top it off with the rest of the onions. These smell so good. and scrape the rest of the onions out of the pan. Now we're going to go ahead and fill up each jar and I'm going to stir the juice as I do it so that everything is stays mixed. We're going to fill it up to the bottom or the top of the shoulder, uh, the bottom of the ring at the top. And like I always tell you, I'm going to go through and put two scoops or whatever uh, I know that I have for sure in my pan into each jar. Because if for some reason I should run short, I would top it off with uh, just some beef broth. However, it wouldn't matter because all my seasonings and all my flavor has been dispersed evenly throughout all my jars. So it looks like I might have plenty, but we'll see. Oops, that one got fuller than the others. pressure canner heating up behind me um, because I'll consider this a hot pack um, because I'm putting this really hot liquid in here or at least it won't be a cold pack uh, I won't get my water overly hot okay now every one of them has a certain amount in them uh, the same amount of flavor so now I still have some left I'm going to go ahead and I think I can top each one of them off to where they need to be. At least I'm close. Out. I think we're actually getting some winds and maybe possibly we might get some rain from that hurricane. Helene that went through. Oh. It was crazy. Alright, we're bringing it right up to the bottom of the rings or to the top of the shoulder. Yeah, I'm going to have plenty of juice. In fact, I have, might have a little bit left that I can season something else with. I don't know. Let's look. We're almost done here. There's a couple of these I could top off. And then after we debubble, sometimes you'll have, you know, you need to add a little more to it. So we'll do that. This came out perfect. I did, you know, double what I originally was going to do of the juice. So, okay, I'm going to take our debubbler. I really prefer to use a a uh, chopstick and my chopstick has disappeared on me so we're going to go down the sides be sure we don't have any bubbles you can see the little uh, line dropped a little bit because there was a bubble in there and that's why we want to do this we want to be sure that our liquid level is where it needs to be at my elevation we're going to process these on 10 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes and I've done so many pressure canning videos that I'm probably not going to go over the actual pressure canning part each time uh, because once you know how to pressure can something uh, you know everything else is pretty much the same I'm gonna I've just got a drop left here and I'm gonna add it to these because once I debubbled the level dropped a smidge and I think that'll be perfect actually I don't think it could have been more perfect if I had tried to do this it wouldn't have worked you know no. 
Those onions are pretty. Okay, I think that's good. All right, now we're going to clean the tops. And because we used a meat with, um, you know, and it could have some grease in it, we want to do a really good job of this. And I'm using hot water on my paper towel. And I'm going to work each one very carefully because we don't want any meat grease to get on there um, and cause our jar not to seal. So we don't have to have our lids in hot water for this. Again, I'm using my four jars lids. Oh my gosh, I love them. So we're going to put our cap on just finger tight. And I'm going to do process these four and four. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move these out of my way and put them into the canner sitting over here so I can have room to work here. Those are so pretty. And even if your jars look like they don't have anything on them, when you wipe them with your paper towel, you'll find that they do. So. So what are your favorite aprons for cooking in the kitchen? If you have something that you really like, put a link down below because I'm always getting stuff all over my clothes. And then, um, you know, I have to change clothes from canning. And I remember my great grandma, she worked in the kitchen and cooked and everything. She always put on an apron. And I'm not, you know, I just want something that's really useful, maybe with a pocket. Um, that might be good. I'm not real frilly. Okay. All right. I got four jars in there. I'm going to go ahead and finish capping these off and get my other ones pressure canning, at least get my canner venting. Um, and I'll be back. Hey guys, it's a few days later, and I opened up a jar of my pot roast um, and I was going to show you as I was opening the drawer, jar and I made mashed potatoes and truly this is the, my favorite thing I have ever canned ever. Um, it came out great. The meat is tender. It's got a delicious gravy, um, wine sauce gravy on there and uh, yeah it had the, the onions and it was delicious so um, I actually had some other things I was going to try, uh, and I still will, but for the most part, I'm going with this. I can imagine having this on a cold, snowy day. So, um, If you like my video, please like, subscribe, share, and if you want to join my garden club, which I teach you how to grow, I teach you how to process um, what you grow, and then I throw in some other things like... Uh, useful, helpful ways of canning and preserving your food. So anyway, if that, if you like this, uh, consider joining my garden club. I'll put the link in here for that and uh, like, subscribe and share this with your friends. Thanks.